Hey developers, today we're gonna look at seven skills software developers should know in 2020. Now, some of these things have been out for a while, but as software developers, we're always learning and trying to get better. So if these technologies you haven't seen before, I think you should really start looking into them and finding out more about them. Now, I wanna hear back from you guys. So as you're watching this video, make sure you leave a comment below if you've seen these technologies before, if you've used them, and if you think these are useful skills. I really do think they are. They've actually really helped me in my career. So let's go ahead and begin and, and take a look at them. Oh yeah, one more thing. My name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm the, also the author of a few books and uh, you can always find any of those links in the description below. So let's begin here. So let me first talk about containerization and using Docker and Kubernetes. So usually this is in the DevOps realm, but I really think this is important for web developers, especially if you're going to the full stack to understand because what you can do with it is you can create these uh, really quick environments that you can get up and running quickly. You can get your code on there and you don't have to install all the dependencies on your local machine. So it's great for testing. It's great for local development as well. And as you progress in your career, it's really a good idea to understand how DevOps works. How does your code get to where it's final destination in front of the customer and a lot of times a lot of larger organizations and even smaller organizations are going to use Docker. They're going to use Kubernetes that orchestrates all these containers. And to understand that, I think makes you a better developer. So if you've been on this path for a while and you don't understand how this containerization, how Docker works, I would definitely start looking into it and reading up on it. The next thing is cloud platforms. So if you have back in the olden days, we all, if you have been around for a while, especially in web development, most people had these like old dusty servers in a closet somewhere and you used FTP and you transferred the files to that server or you maybe had an actual server that was offsite somewhere that you installed everything on. But nowadays we have these amazing platforms like Google Cloud, Amazon Web Services, Azure, Netlify, Netlify Rackspace. I mean, there's so many of them out there that makes our jobs easier. And there's so many services that these have like uh, we'll talk about in the future, like lambdas and serverless. In fact, when I was at, I was actually recently at AWS reInvent, which is at Amazon Web Services conference they held every they hold every year. This one was in Vegas. There was over sixty five thousand people there. It was amazing. It was over six like hotels. There was thousands of different workshops. It was amazing, and it just shows you all the things that AWS is doing. There's so many different services. And if you don't understand them all, that's okay. But I would start looking into it. If your company doesn't use AWS, you know, look into Azure, see what they do there. Look into GCP, Google Cloud Platform, and try to understand the services out there because it can make you a better developer to understand how to plug in and how to architect a whole app. Because I think eventually, and we all start off as lowly, uh, you know, no, don't know anything. We're just creating simple apps. But as we grow as software developers, understanding all the services and how to plug everything together and how to architect something is very important. Having these Google Cloud platforms, having these cloud platforms will help you with that. Also, if you're going into data science, machine learning, AI, you need to understand these cloud platforms because they have so many services that can make your life easier. Before we get too much farther, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. Let's have a quick word from our sponsor. And today it is Eduonix. That's E-D-U-O-N-I-X.com. They are a course platform. They have a lot of courses and a lot of great deals. They have these monthly sales like this month. It's buy one, get one free. So make sure you check it out. I actually have a coupon code ERIC20. That's E-R-I-K-20 that you can get additional 20% off. But I want to highlight real quickly one of their e-degrees. It's the full stack JavaScript developer e-degree. So this has like 55 hours of content. It has over 2000 students already. It's basically a complete resource to learn full stack JavaScript web development. It's a comprehensive program, includes over 12 courses, 30 projects, and hundreds of source code snippets. And uh, as it says, the only resource you need to learn full stack web development. So I would highly recommend looking at this. I looked at the course curriculum. So it has everything from HTML, semantic HTML, advanced CSS, JavaScript, goes into frameworks, even goes into PWAs. So check this out. Make sure you use the code ERIK20. I'll have the link in the description. Make sure you click on that link and check out Eduonix. Thanks. So moving on, uh, serverless has been a, a buzzword for a while now. 
So it's really good if you haven't jumped on this on this trend is to understand how can you make your apps in such a way, especially we're talking about full stack and the back end, where we can take some dedicated piece of information and put it into its own repo, its own small segment that we can put on uh, on something that runs in the cloud uh, serverless. So we don't have to worry about the, um, you don't have to worry about dedicating processor speed it has or maintaining the machine. It just, you put the code in there, it runs, it's an endpoint that people can hit. So maybe this, we need to figure out what scenarios would work for serverless, like sessions, like processing certain events, you know, auto scaling websites and APIs. So you, this is kind of the bread and butter of serverless. If you have other scenarios, I'd love to hear for, I'll hear about them. Leave a comment below. So maybe try to think like, how can I use serverless in my apps? If you're f directly just working the front end, it's not, uh, it doesn't quite be applicable, applicable, but you should start thinking about where you can use serverless. I think end to end, and really this slide could be about testing in general, is that how can we do testing better in our everyday apps? And especially if you're working in the front end, Cypress is a really cool end-to-end -end test runner. I think it really makes a lot of sense. It's been getting a lot of momentum the last couple of years. So I would see how can you use end-to-end -end Cypress testing for those, testing all the different parts of your website, and then maybe using the smaller, smaller Jest or Karma unit tests to test individual pieces of your app. And try to keep in mind, you want to always try to test how the user is going to interact with it. So keep that in mind and how you're going to split your tests. And if you haven't gone in this trend of testing in general, then welcome board. Maybe start trying to try to make some smaller tests along the way. But using Cypress, I think, is a great technology and something you should learn. Now, uh, this one, CSS Subgrid and CSS Houdini. If you haven't gone in the grid bandwagon, uh, I think this is a great place, great time to start if you haven't already. I am a big Flex fan, but when I'm creating those complicated layouts, um, two-dimensional layouts, and I want the boxes in the exact correct places. I can do a lot of it with flex, but sometimes CSS grid is just easier. And CSS subgrid is coming out, and CSS Houdini is coming out. So if we talk about CSS subgrid, it's basically a level two of the CSS grid layout specification that includes a subgrid value for grid template columns and grid template rows. And if you set the value of subgrid on grid template columns or grid template rows or both, Instead of creating a new track list listing, the nested grid uses the tracks defined on the parent. So instead of having this, um, this nested version of your grid, it'll actually kind of form to the tracks that you created above it, which is really neat. So keep an eye out for CSS subgrid. I believe it's in, it might be in some early versions of some of our browsers right now, but it's coming. And then I don't know a whole lot about CSS Houdini, but I think this is also a good trend, especially in web development to learn uh, Houdini says CSS, a new collection of browser APIs, which allows you to gain more access to your browser CSS engine. So that I know properties, you can like have custom properties and values. There's a paint API, there's like five others. But this is kind of a neat trend that I think is, is good. And, and basically upping up your CSS skills in general might be in, in, in a good idea too. But I think this is technology and skill that you should learn if you haven't already. Uh, algorithms. Now this is really general and I think algorithms is something that people should learn anyways. There is some kind of disagreement on this, but I think as you go through your career, you are gonna run into situations where you need to create really efficient code and you might be pulling from some of these algorithms and some of these patterns and trying to understand how these things work, especially if you're going to look for a new job, if you're looking for any of the big N type jobs, Google, Facebook, you're gonna definitely be seeing these algorithm type questions, I think it just makes you a better programmer, at least understanding them. I don't expect any everybody, you, you can ask me, I wouldn't how, know how to pull these up off the top of my head. Um, but I think I could figure it out and I've been exposed to these and something I'm always trying to get better at too. So understanding like the basic algorithms between linked lists, graphs, like dynamic programming questions, trees, binary search trees, bit manipulation. String manipulation I think is probably common, you almost use a lot of string manipulation type problems in your everyday apps, especially if you're doing complicated web development apps, you're going to be doing some of these algorithms. So I think it's a good idea to learn these. And if you haven't already, it's it's time to do that. I really like this trend of headless CMSs with Jamstack. These skills 
are are very valuable to learn this technology. Um, like I have had many people ask me to do a tutorial with Strapi with either something like Grid, Gridsum, or Nuxt, or even Gatsby. So that Grid Strapi is an open source Node.js headless CMS. Nuxt is like a Vue SSR app. Uh, I talked about a little bit about Gridsum. It's kind of the Gatsby of Vue.js. So you're, what's essentially all these technologies are doing is you're contacting your front end is talking to this headless CMS, which is a content management system, to grab information to populate the website. So uh, essentially, a lot of companies just grab something like WordPress or Drupal, and they put that up as their front end. But what we're finding is that we can have your, your managers, your project managers, your marketing people still use something like a WordPress or, or a Drupal or something like that, but that information will then flow into a front end app and the front end developers can customize the app and make it exactly the way they want it instead of being kind of constricted or being in the WordPress ecosystem and having to deal with all of that. So I think this, this way where we're taking um, information and pushing it into the, to the front end and I, I kind of like this pattern and it's something to keep an eye out for. And it, I think this is a skill to learn how these technologies work. All right, so thanks. Agree or disagree, let me know. Leave a comment below. Do you agree with the seven I, the seven I picked? Should there be some more I picked in there? Now, I called these skills. I really do think that learning new technology and learning new things are skills. And if you're really good at word, like these headless CMS, that is a skill that you can transfer to different jobs. So if you disagree that's not a skill, let me know in the comments below. I really appreciate it. And thanks.